So I grew up playing the board game Clue. I don't know if you ever played Clue, uh, a bunch of people in a big old house with all these different rooms. I feel like most people have. You know, Colonel Mustard, Miss Scarlet, there's weapons, someone gets murdered, and you guess who was murdered in the room with the candlestick. And so the book we're going to talk about today totally gives me Clue vibes. Not like 100%, but it was very similar in that vibe. There's a few twists in it that, uh, I don't know if they caught me by surprise, but I thought it was a lot of fun to read. And that book is The Hitchcock Hotel by Stephanie Robel. And it's about this guy named Alfred and his namesake actually comes from Alfred Hitchcock. And that was kind of like his bond with his mother growing up. They would watch Hitchcock movies together and all that stuff. When he grew up after school and all of that stuff, he ended up buying this old house on the hill and he turned it into a Hitchcock themed hotel. And so for the anniversary, the first anniversary of it, he wants to invite his friends from college that in college, they were really great friends. They were all in a film club together and he just wants to bring them there. And so they can see, you know, what he's done with his life and whatnot. And not all of them had really kept in contact too much. There was one girl in the group who kind of kept everyone together and in contact. And that was Samira. None of them really seem to want to go to this, but they all kind of convince each other to go. And it's not stated in the beginning why. It seems something happened their last year of college in this town called Revel, but they don't really have it out in the open. <laughs> and what comes to light, so everyone gets to the hotel, right? And Alfred shows them around and the rooms are all on the same floor. And there's a few things that I thought, you know, it was kind of weird. He gives his staff for the weekend Everybody except the one housemaid, Danny. Danny's like this 80 year old woman. She's a widow and she is like his, I don't know, confidant, the closest thing he has to a mother. She's his right hand man or woman. She gets the stuff done. The rest of the staff, he's like, they don't have to be here for the rest of the weekend. So that's kind of weird, right? His friends don't know that or former friends or whatever they are, don't know that the staff is gonna go home or anything. So this is unbeknownst to them. And it also seems like all the friends, they all have these secrets and have skeletons in their closet that gets dredged up as you get further into the story that maybe one wouldn't be quite expecting. And so you go in and you're still like, what the heck happened last year of college that everyone's all weird about that they don't really talk about that Alfred felt like everyone screwed him over. So the first night they're having dinner one of the other people there, her name is Zoe, and she has been sober for two months. It's pretty obvious she's going to fall off the wagon here because going back into this situation and dealing with Alfred and the other people and whatever happened that in that last year of school. <laughs> so she starts drinking again. Things like slip out here and there that hint towards what may have happened. And there's like this whole intertwined like backstory of all the friends and all these things that happened that led to the present day. And so Albert's Hotel isn't really doing that great. It has bookings like on the weekend, but during the weekdays is kind of slow. And so what it seems like he's trying to do is to have something happen at the hotel that will make a good story that will draw people in. So I don't know if he wants to like make somebody disappear or someone ends up dead or what have you. But these other people too, I wouldn't call them exactly like easy pushovers to be uh, messed with either. <laughs> so it's a weird story. And like the whole thing is like, so you go into it and you kind of think like, okay, is this guy trying to like kill his friends because that might be where you think it's going but he never really has any weapons on himself other than like a little swiss army pocket knife it doesn't seem that's what he's trying to do and the way the story goes is so weird it descends into chaos as you get into each character's backstory so there's five friends you have zoe samira tj julius and grace it seems like Grace and Alfred might be in cahoots about something because she seemed to have been the one pushing everyone to come for this weekend. So there's all kinds of like weird stuff. What is this all about? What is supposed to happen there? And you know, people start to get suspicious a little bit. 
And so Zoe, like, the first night, she gets all wasted because she falls off the wagon because of the weird situation they're in. And she blurted out some things about what maybe happened in the, the year that Elford felt he was betrayed by people or what have you. And so she gets all wasted. And then she's just, like, severely ill the next day. And she thinks maybe she was poisoned. It's like, no, no, you just drank a lot of alcohol. And, uh, you know, this is what happens when you haven't drank for two months, maybe. Maybe she was poisoned. I don't know. But yeah, it's got definitely like clue vibes. It kept me guessing. What happened in the end, there's twists, but they weren't necessarily surprising. I felt like it was the natural way the story should go, almost. But what kept me guessing was when a body does show up, how it happened, who it was, and that it could be multiple people. <laughs> I liked the writing, I liked how it had that clue vibe, I liked the characters, it was a crazy motley crew of people. They all meshed well together in this story and the things that were done by different people and why they were done and what was going on. There was a bunch of different storylines that were inter interwoven pretty well, I thought. I thought that worked well. I guess it's a who done it. You're out there guessing. Who did this? Who? And what happened in that final year of school when Alfred felt betrayed? Even though he, maybe he wasn't betrayed, but maybe he was. I don't know. You'll have to read the book to find out. And it was a lot of fun. If you like Clue, if you like whodunits, if you like books with twists that you may or may not see coming, then The Hitchcock Hotel is a lot of fun. And you should definitely check it out. Also, if you enjoyed hanging out today, Hit that subscribe button, come back, see me again, and we'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff.